of bed and stumble to the kitchen Pour myself a cup of ambition Yawn and stretch and try coach life Jump in the shower and the blood starts pumping Out on the street the traffic starts jumping With folk like me on the job from 9 to 5 Working 9 to 5 What a way to make a living Berries getting by It's all taking and no giving They just use your mind And they never give you credit It's a 9 to And no giving And they never give you credit It's a nod to drive you Crazy if you let it Working nine to five For certain stand devotion You would think that I Would be sure to get promotion Want to move ahead But that fast won't seem to let me I swear sometimes I manage I'll see me Working nine to five Working nine to five. Working nine to five. Nine to five. Oh, look! A new breakfast cereal. Oh, it must be for Mrs. Clockback's breakfast. Looks ever so nice. Mm. Mm. Thanks. I would like some of that. Mm. Oh, thanks again. But if I did, Mrs. Cropbanks would wallop me. <laughs> oh, clever, clever thanks. I could eat some of that, put some back in the plate, and then she wouldn't notice, would she? Oh, lovely. Croc, what are you doing? Oh, oh, where could you find me? I thought you were Mrs. Cropbags. Here, I'm eating some of her new breakfast. <laughs> so be so nice. I'm going to put some back on the plate so she won't notice I've been eating it. <laughs> but, but, but she always has a pickled onions dipped in strawberry jam for breakfast. Ooh, Ooh revolting. Oh, mm. Let's have a look. Tom Thumb. Free trial offer. Oh, here's the answer, Croc. We'll make you lose pounds instantly. It's health food. She's going on a diet. Ooh, <laughs> lose pounds with this. <laughs> she needs a container ship full. It's ever so nice. You should try some. Oh, no, Croc, no, thank you. You see, robots can't eat ordinary food. No, it, it clogs up the gyroscopics, you see. But this is delicious, you know. You'll be missing out. Go and try some. You oh. might like it. Oh, well, all right, then. I'll have a little try. <clears throat> well? Mm. Yes. Oh, yes, it's delicious. Mm. Mm. Yeah, let's have some more, oh, shall yes, we? Yes, come yes. on. <laughs> oh, please, oh, please. She's getting up. Quick, quick, quick. Put some more back on the plate and put it back before oh. she comes. Oh. <clears throat> oh, wipe your mouth, Croc. What are you two up to? I, I know nothing about your new breakfast cereal, Mrs. Cropbanks. Redford said you wanted the container ship full. <laughs> Mm, I, I'm, I'm wiping my mouth because mm, it was delicious. Ooh, and, and, uh, he means it, it looks delicious, mm, yes. Mrs. Grop. That's your breakfast. Yes. But I'm having it, Redford. Oh, that! That's not mine. That's that streaky bonehead Rod and Emu down at the Pink Windmill. For Rod? Yes. And Emu? Mm. It's my new magic spell. Oh. Magic, magic spell? spell? Oh. Yes, you see. I'm going to deliver this cereal down to the pink windmill without them knowing it. <laughs> and that stupid bonehead Rod and Emu are bound to try it. And when they do, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! <laughs> Tom Thumb, free trial hopper. The cereal, what makes you lose pounds instantly. <laughs> 
You see, they only need a plate full of this, and within half an hour, they'll shrink to the size of my thumb. <laughs> if that's not losing weight, I don't know what is. <laughs> oh, what are we going to do? I think, I think it's starting to work. I can feel it. Oh, oh, water, water. Help What's me. the matter with him? Oh, oh, he's got himself this morning, Mrs. Grotbanks. Are oh, you, Crop? Calm down, Crop, calm down. I'll think of something in a minute. Well, we stay like it. Uh, the, the, he means, uh, uh, will that rod and that emu stay? They're small. Stay small. Oh, yes, of course. Well, at least long enough for me to pick them up and put them in this little pouch. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and then I'm going to bring them back here. And then in half an hour, when the effect wears off, we'll have them. <laughs> oh, this is the bestest plan yet. <laughs> you two stay here while I go and deliver the cereal down to the pink windmill. <laughs> if I roll the world now, there it is. <laughs> oh, Redford, Redford, what are we going to do? I've only got tiny little legs as it is. And if I shrink, they'll be even smaller. Oh, and then Mrs. Clock makes a wallop us for eating her breakfast. Oh, and then... No, oh. she won't, Crop. Oh. No, she won't. Now, listen, you heard what she said. Oh. She's going down to the pink windmill. Now, we'll shrink. But by the time she gets back, the effects will have worn off and we'll be back to normal. So, she won't know. Oh, and... And we won't get one. No. Oh! Oh! <laughs> 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 that I need you on this mission after all. Yes, you are going to deliver the cereal down to the pink windmill while I sit on the hover grot. And then you can look through the windows and report to me when they've eaten it. <laughs> oh, oh, do we have to go, Mrs. Grotbags? I mean, we would much rather stay here, wouldn't we, Crop? Mm, yes. yes. So that we could be here to greet you on your return uh, with that rod and that emu yes. on your... A triumphant mission. Yes. <laughs> the basking in the glory which you deserve. Mm. Yes. Mm. After your crowning achievement. Mm. I'll crown you with this in a minute, you rusty weighing machine. Oh, that's right. Go on, insult me. Go on. Insult me. Oh, you certainly know how to make a person feel small. <laughs> Hello, what's your name? Emma. Emma. Hello, Emma. And how old are you? Eight. Eight. Are you ready to go shopping, Emma? Come on, then. We'll help you. Emma's going to go shopping, so let's give her as much encouragement as we can. Three, two, one, go! Emma, 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 Here we are, Emma. There's your trolley, shopping trolley. That's it. We'll see what you've got. I'm sure you've done very well. Oh, it's 
bit puffy and panty, isn't it, Emma? You got a tin of soup. That's two points. And a oh, tin of soup with an emblem on it. That's a, for a special. And a bar of soap with an emblem on it. That's another special. So I'll give you your specials first, Emma. There's a, a special emu bag. They're very good for school, actually. You put all your things in there. Open it up, and you've got a tape, emu tape, of all of our adventures at the Pink Windmill, and an emu badge as well. OK? So you've got a total of... <laughs> Emma's got 14 points. I'm sure 14 points would be quite a nice... Oh, it is. Quite Look, a nice prize, isn't it? Because you can write to everybody at the Pink Windmill as much as you want... Yes. ...with this writing set, is it? Write to everybody at the Pink yes. Windmill when this is their writing case. Yes. That's for you, OK? Thank you. Bye-bye, Emma. Bye. See you later. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy! I can't wait to see this plan work. That Emu will soon be in my power, and then I will control all the brats in the world. <laughs> Have you got the cereal packet? Yes, yes, I have. Oh, Redford. Oh, I'm beginning to feel a bit, bit, a bit peculiar. Oh, so am I, Croc, so am I. But mind you, that's nothing unusual. I always do on this, this flying carpet sweeper. No, no, I don't mean that. I mean, I think the effects of the cereal is starting to work. Oh, Oh, I think you might be right, Croc. Oh. oh, it must be about time now. What, she said it would take about half an hour, didn't she? Oh, oh dear. Oh, yes, and if we shrink, she'll know that we've been eating her cereal. Oh, and we'll get walloped. Oh, oh no. Oh, I've just had a thought, Croc. What? Oh, I mean, supposing it should happen while we're on this. Oh, oh. we'll be so small, we'll have nothing to hold on to, and the wind will probably blow us right off. Oh, oh dear. I thought of it. Oh, oh dear, Redford, what are we going to do? Oh. Quick, Mrs. Godbags, Quick. get us there fast. Hurry up, come on. Faster. Please step up if you want to go oh. faster, Mrs. Godbags. You can Godbanks. run with me as fast as I can. Faster. Faster. What's the hell with you? Oh. You're not usually in this much of a hurry to go on a mission. Oh, we can't wait to get to that pink windmill. Can we cross? No, we no. can't. Hurry. Oh. oh, do you know, that does my heart good to hear you say that. Do you know, there was a time when I thought there was no hope for you two. But I can really see that you're both... Trying your best. Oh, we are, we are, aren't we, Croc? Yes, we are. Just hurry up and get there. Ooh. Oh, that's music, music to my ears. Ooh. My two faithful helpers. Oh, I'm so pleased. I'm going to let you continue with this mission. Here, Redford, you take this little bag, and that's for you to put that little rod and emu in it. Then when you've done it, I'll beam you back both out, and then we will return home triumphant as a team. Oh, anything you say, oh. Mrs. Grotbags, only get us there, yes, fast. Oh. Anything. It's so oh. sweet. I feel quite overcome. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, in the di it's a diary. Get the diary. Here you Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Ha, huh? diary, upside down, but now it's around the right way. Emu's Wide World, and that's just what it's about, because, as you know, we record all of our adventures all over the world here in our Emu's Wide World diary. And last week, we had a letter from a little boy who lived all the way out in Toronto. He wanted Emu and I to go and join his school ice hockey team. Well, we went out there, and we got a picture of it, and I was very pleased that we had an instructor called Jim, who really helped us. <laughs> Is that us? Oh. All right, wait a minute. Oh. Uh, are you all right? Oh. <laughs> wait a minute, now. Oh, you're very kind, Jim. Thank you. Very... Careful, Jim. Yes, OK. Here we go. Oh, yes. Right, start the game. Yeah, that'll be. 
bitch. Like this. Ever so good, isn't it, eh? Oh, we should be very famous at that. We will, won't we, eh? Anyway, from all over the wide world to a part right back here to a part of Emu's wide world. And I'm talking about that part that's been tucked away in a time zone for ages and ages. It's a place where my ancestor lives, and over there in Boggle's Kingdom, they're going to start a brand new adventure. Burning board. Oh, I bet that boggle knows something about this. Boggle. What's the meaning of this? You're not allowed to see that, my dear. It's top secret. It's my new invention, so as the army can get into battle faster. <laughs> and it works very well, you know. I've just been trying it out. <laughs> top secret? New invention? What stupid nonsense is this? If you think your army's going into battle on my ironing board, you've got another thing coming. You can't take that, my dear. That's high treason. It's been inquisitioned for the state of emergency. Requisitioned? With that as well. Secrets. Prince Paulie has his army all around the village and is going to invade. And he's got outside help. That's why I've called a special war conference. Here we go again. Well, may I remind you, brother dear, yeah. that our cousin, Prince Paulie of Ailing, who is just as stupid as you are, yeah. he tries to invade our village at least once a week. <laughs> and what happens? Oh, he gets the cold or palpitations. And then they all pack up and go home. Well, I'm going to see him and tell him to stop this nonsense! But you can't go out there, my dear. We're on a war footing. Anyway, it might start snooing. I can't stay here. I've got to get to my war conference and show everyone my new invention. <laughs> now, men, I'd like to bring you up to date. As you can see from the map here, Prince Paulie has his men encamped various strategic points all around the village, completely encircling us. This information has been gathered by Brandon, who's in charge of intelligence, men. <laughs> men, His Majesty is due to report at any minute on a new secret weapon. I'll just see if he's coming. Oh, 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 yeah, sir. Oh, Your Majesty, yeah. excellent, yeah. excellent. Oh, your majesty, if we could get all our men moving at that speed, we could go straight into Prince Paulie's army and scatter them. That's exactly what I thought, Odd Job John. <laughs> and I invented it, because I'm a king. Oh, Chronicler Charles, look at that. Well, what a joy folded a military concept for the royal brainchild through for this. <laughs> yeah. You know, these rotate, you would obviously got a velocity of high tensile through, mm. whose velocity is skate through as oh, fast as tankers holding that. And what about slip steel troops, Snoot and those? Very like the Concorde throw for that. Only a deep congratulations on the Royal Forkers for that military thunder mold. That's oh, exactly yes. what I was going to say, Chronic. Yes. And of course, when I was out there, I was thinking all those things when I was out there testing it, like a, like a test pilot I was on its test run. Just me and the elements, wondering if it would respond to my controls, wondering if, if I'd get back. La di da la da di di di. Mm -hmm. <laughs> John, what odd job number are we up to? Oh, sir. Odd job number 50, sir. 50, yes, well, odd job number 50, uh, manufacture one of those big enough to get all of our men on so we can go into battle and whoosh, if it's a fast. Odd job number 50. Now, what shall we call it? 
Chronicler Charles, what would you suggest? Good question, Harbour Jobber. I'd say, uh, let's see, transport aid of a new kind. That's Chronic, better. Chronic, you can't call it transport aid of a new kind. I mean, how could you say, come on, men, all get on board the transport aid of a new kind? And what about the enemy? How could they say, oh, run for your lives, here comes the transport aid of a new kind? They wouldn't have time to get the words out transport before they could start. Transport aid new kind, T-A-N-K. Tank, Your Majesty, we'll call it a tank. Oh, job, John, I think I've invented something that's going to go down in history. <laughs> I'll give that Prince Paulie a piece of my mind. Uh, the war conference went very well, Your Majesty. It did, didn't it, John? Yes. yes. I think I'll get back to the workshop side and start working on our new tank. Oh, John, John, just a minute. Just before you go, what, what's this outside help that Prince Paulie's got? Well, no one seems to know, Your Majesty, but whatever it is, it must be good. I've never known Prince Paul imagine an attack like this before. Oh. Just what is Prince Paulie's outside help? Will Buggles' invention save Dreamy Village? Be watching next week. We've just opened up the pink windmill post office again because we've been receiving lots and lots of letters. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to some of you. Um, there's a nice one here from Amanda, who's done this lovely picture of, of the pink windmill there. And uh, she says, it's lovely to see you back. Isn't that nice, Emu? And on the inside is a picture from her sister, thanks, Emu, who says, we've really missed you. Well, thank you very much for that. And we've got a nice one here of a of a picture of you. Look, there's a nice picture of Emu there. You've got a nice beat there. That's from Peter Stellard, aged three and a half, and crossed out and put four and a half. So, and we've had another letter here from, which is a, from one of our older viewers, from a, a, a grandmother, Mrs Armstrong, who said she's got 12 grandchildren and every one of them phones her up to see if she's watching the show. So that's very nice of you to write to us, Mrs Armstrong. And finally, this lovely little letter here from from Murray, who's written to us, a very tiny little letter. You see that? And on the inside, he's written to Grotbags saying, Dear Grotbags, can you do some magic and send me some paper? Yes, I can, I can understand why, Murray. It's a very nice letter, though. Thank you. But of course, from all the letters we get here, we get a heck of a lot of letters for our twin school segment. And that's coming up right now. So sit back and watch our twin schools report. <laughs> Well, Amy and I have come down to St Jamestown, uh, to Rose Avenue, where we found this lovely school here, and it's a super playground, and they've got this wonderful, great big climbing frame here, which is very nice. And with me is Mr Urquhart, who's in charge of the school. It's a lovely school, so well, we've thank been you having very a much. look around. And you've got, to, and the, how many kids have you got We here? have about 400 children. 400? Yes. And the ages range from? Well, from four years old to 11 from four yes. to 11. And I was, you, you were ch chatting about your, your uh, sporting things. You, on, the, on the program. Well, we have baseball, which is going on right now. Baseball, yeah. And uh, it's the season for it. And in the winter time, we have ice hockey. Ice hockey. And uh, a lot of the children enjoy that very much. Yes. And ice skating, of course. Everybody loves that. Yeah, well, in fact, well, in fact I've tried it with Emu and we, we didn't do, do very well. But, uh, well, that's nice. It's a, it's a nice thing that the kids can come here and do these sort of ordinary academic lessons and still enjoy things like ice hockey and, right. and baseball. Well, the interesting thing about this school probably is that there are 46 nationalities here. So we have uh, a great many children who come to us not speaking English at first and then gradually it becomes their second language. Oh, I see. And do you teach them any other language alongside English? At or? night we do, yes. At yeah. night? Yeah. So they can come back at night? They can, yes, if they wish to. Oh, that's nice. And that's a, nice. Uh, a lot of them do, as a matter of fact. And we teach Mandarin and, and Greek and that's, Urdu. That's a pretty wide range, isn't it? It is indeed, yes. Mandarin, Greek and Urdu. And there's, I suppose the second lesson uh, uh, language is French as well, is it here? Oh, that's taught from grade four on, yes. Uh, everybody takes French. But that's lovely. So well, we're, we're going to do our best to train you with a similar school in England. I doubt well, if we'll find one that does ice hockey and baseball, but, but we'll do our best. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. Oh, that was lovely, wasn't it? Actually, that wasn't the hovergrot flying over. That was a great big jet plane 
flying over whilst we were doing that interview. But it's a great school, isn't it? That's the Rose Avenue School. And if you want your school to be twinned with that one, as you know, there's 400 children and their ranges range between 4 and 11. And if you, if you would like to be twinned with that school, then why not just drop us a line here at the Pink Windmill Post Office. And do you remember the school we showed you last week? I know you do. It's the, it was the Jesse Ketchum School. And from all the letters, we're very happy to say that that's been twinned with the Chapel Field School in Solihull. So very soon those two schools will be getting in touch and sending letters all the way around the world, won't they? And talking about going around the world, why don't we go down to the basement? Because it's time for Emu's Bargain Basement Game. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And what is it? It's time for Emu's Bargain Basement. Yeah. Shopper, come on, shopper. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Yeah. You look very smart. What's your name? Helen. Hello, Helen. And and what's and how old are you? Hate. Hate. Ellen's hate. Is that right, Ellen? Yes. Ellen is hate. And what school do you go to? White Gate. White Gate. White Gate. Eight White Gate. And Helen goes to eight. Oh, never mind. You, you, you know what you're doing now, don't you? Yeah. You're in Emu's Barkham Basement and you're going to go shopping. Yeah. All right, I'll take the trolley up here. You come with me. You ready? That's it, you get set. Are we ready, gang? Three, yeah. two, one, go! Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you do when you go shopping with your mum? Yeah. Is it? You like to take the trolley round to the checkout, Helen? All right. You've got lots of shopping in there, hasn't she, Emu? Let's have a look. Oh, look. Oh, I can see some already. On oh, one of your packets of Emu bird seed, you've got a special, one of our specials today, haven't you? And what's our special today? Uh, oh, it's one of these, isn't it? It's an Emu cassette of all of our adventures at the Pink Windmill. It's even got grot bags on there, but we won't worry about that, will we? So you've got 25, bar of soap is 35. Oh, you've got another one of these, haven't you? That's 60. And two tins of soup, 62, 64 points! Wow, she's got 64! That's very good, isn't it? And we'll see just what Sarah's picked from you from the bargain shop at 64 points. And here she comes. You can either have that yeah, lovely trolley in. or you can have Sarah. No, I think you'd rather have what's in here. You'd rather have what's in no, there. No, you can listen to all your favourite tunes with this, a personal cassette player. Yes, oh. Yeah. Oh. Look at that. And you've even got those special speakers as well. Is that that's all for you? OK, Helen. Thank you very much for shopping with us. Bye-bye. <laughs> Clock. There's nobody here. Put the cereal on the table. Oh, oh, oh yeah, there. Yeah. Quick, now. We've got to hide with, with that bag. Oh, yes. Oh. Come on. Oh, 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 oh you, you've dropped the bag. Fun down there in the park and basement in the Avenue. Hey, shall, shall we get some breakfast? What should we have? Bubble and squeak. Yeah, and some cabbages for you. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. Oh, what about some sausages? It's gonna be nice to sit for breakfast, isn't it? We we'll get the plates. Tom's thumb? 
free trial offer. The postman must have left it. Because the, the door's open. Yeah, let's try some, shall we? I wonder what it's going to be like. Do you think it'll be nice? I don't it Smells delicious. Shall we have something? Don't throw it away like that. That's not... Stop it. That's very wasteful to... What's that? It's a bag. Well, I've not seen this here before, have you? magic spells and if they're here that means that that grot bags can't be too far away Shh. okay i'm here i couldn't wait any longer have you completed your mission redford croc where are those two stupid assistants of mine i knew i shouldn't have trusted them with this mission I'm... Take it all back. My very, very own little rod and emu. Always think about it, go and dance. You'll find out. Wait and see. We were dancing on our own as our bodies moved to our favourite song. Then the music suddenly changed its speed. Then everyone did something I could hardly believe. Body dancing, cheek to cheek. Body dancing. Feet. Body dancing, clothes are tight Dancing toe to toe, cheek to cheek Ooh, what a sight Body dancing, that's what they call it Body dancing, ooh, I love it Body dancing, ooh, so neat It's so hot you'll never start somebody with me like this. I don't care how it started, oh. but I sure know how it's going to finish. Oh. You stupid oh. 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 How could you do 
it to me yet again! Oh, nice gentlemen! Had enough of you two! Miss Cropex, it must be time for me and Redford to go down to the dungeons and get some of them brats! Oh, yes, it must be time! No, it isn't! Let's do it! Let's do it! Come back here! Oh, let them go and get three brats! Cos if they think they're going to get their freedom, they've got another thing coming! I'm in a right mood now! <laughs> Right. I found Come on, three. is that the little boy in the middle? Ooh, That's the way. So and so welcome easy. to the grotto game. Yay! What's it like? Sarah, Peter and Helen. Oh, we've got a lovely game for you three. We've got a game we call Hoopla, Hoopla. where you throw the hoops over the sticks. Do you know that one? Oh, I used to be ever so good at this, you know. I won a prize at this once. Did you know you? what I won? Yes, I won him. You <laughs> oh, No, because what did I want with the crocodile? So I took the booby prize instead. Oh, what was the booby prize? A fortnight's holiday with grot bags. <laughs> anyway, come on, we're going to play the game now. Tell them wh wh what they're going to do up there, up onto the stop step. That's it, right? You're the yellow, you're the red, and you're the blue. Now, when Croc says one, two, three, go, you're going to throw those over the sticks, and the one who gets most over the stick is the winner. All right? Ready, Croc? Yes. All ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Have we got a winner? We got one yellow, one red, and we've got two blues. Yeah. Yeah. Helen, you're the winner. Now I'm afraid you two are going to have to go back to that nasty, dirty, dank dungeon yes. of Mrs. Grotbags, haven't you? Yes, you better take some matches with you. It's very just yes, got a special little prize for you to take back with you. Here we All go. right. Pointy shirt each. Got them? That's it. You take those. Okay. Off you go Come to the dungeons then. Bye. bye. Say bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Rings here now. You're going to play the cauldron game to see if you can get a lovely big bumper prize to take away with your freedom. All right. Tell them about the cauldrons, Croc. Yes. Well, as we all know by now, we have two cauldrons, and in one of the cauldrons we have a booby prize, and in the other cauldron we have a super prize. Oh, <laughs> it's the super prize we want, isn't it? Yes. So you've got to decide number two or number five. Which one? Five. Number five. <laughs> okay, number five. Right, we're off to Mrs. Grotbags. Oh, Croc, yes. pick them up, please. Oh, I don't yes. want to find any mess in here when I come back, or I shall warn Mrs. Grotbags, all right? Oh, yes, all right. Here we go. Oh, oh, yeah. But you see, Colin, if only you flew a bit faster, you wouldn't collect so Mrs. much Grotbags, dust. Mrs. I've Grotbags, just about had enough. You're great I've got to clear everything Mrs. Grotbags, I've what? got someone to see you. This is Helen. Hello, and Helen. Helen is our winner this week of the Cauldron Game. Well done! Nice. Would you like to see a quick impression? She's got good taste, this girl. <laughs> I don't know why right, now, bring while she's me. looking at that, we're going to show the boys and girls at home. That's what's in the cauldron. Right. Do you know, I've right. to do all the clearing up here. I don't know why I have Redford and Croc. Oh, I see. Here we have a beautiful book. The BFG. The beautiful, fun-loving Grotbergs. Oh. <laughs> yes, it's a lovely book for you. And also... Basil, I've told you, I've told you a thousand times, keep out of the cauldron. And of course, this lovely little book here, you can have that instead, numbers, Amy numbers. Oh, instead she's of building up a library. And... Here. Oh, a game, what you can play with who your friends. <laughs> you can invite them all round and have a game of that. And I think I'll get rid of Horace too. No, oh, no, I'll just keep no. him for a while. And. This beautiful golf set. It's there a you pen are. Set. You can have all that pen for your cauldron. What should she do, Brad? <laughs> This bumper fun book. Yes. It's lovely. You can have all that. Right. Well with the what do you want? Set. What do you want? Cauldron. Hey? Cauldron. What, the cauldron? That's your influence, you! Why don't you be quiet, you horrible little brat? 
Sounds good, that, doesn't I'm it, eh? I'm fed up with this. It's exciting. Would you like to read out what you've won? Camera. Pardon? Camera. A camera! A camera. Oh, you took that quick. All right, got it. I hope it's out of focus. Oh, fool. Get out Come of here. Come on, quick, quick, quick. Go on, oh, get out check. of here, you horrible little brat. Week. Oh, it's been another lovely day at the Pink Windmill. What's that? The poem book. Do you want me to read your poem? There. You'll like this one. It's called An English Poem. The sun shone from a cloudless sky, o'er England's fields of corn, and dried each poppy's dew dropped eye to greet the summer's morn. A far off skylark's joyful song, the great oak's dappled leaves, the scent of summer borne along by gentle warming breeze, the trickling of the sleepy brook, the lush green sward so thick, and all around sweet heavenly peace. Doesn't it make you sick? It's a nice to make a living It's all taken and no giving And they never give you credit It's enough to drive you crazy if you let it work in 9 to 5 For certain stand devotion You would think that I would be sure to get promotion Want to move ahead But the boss won't seem to let me I swear sometimes I manage Working nine to five. Working nine to five. 